Good evening and welcome to worship. Just a quick honk if you can hear me. Thank you. Tonight is <laughs> Thank you. Tonight is our Maundy Thursday worship service. So welcome to all of you who've joined us out here on this blessedly calm night tonight. I am so <laughs> you have no idea how happy I am about that. You probably do actually. And so welcome to you all. Welcome to those of you who have joined us online through our Facebook stream. It's wonderful to have everyone here and worshiping on this most holy Thursday night. So with that, let us begin with our call to worship. A table is set before us. A feast is prepared for us. A meal of bread and wine, a meat and bitter herbs. The Lord calls us to this supper of remembrance. The Lord calls us to serve and to be served. As we break the bread and share the cup, our understanding may fail us. But we will never forget Christ's example. We will never forget the full extent of his love. One quick service note before we continue with our confession and forgiveness. Just a reminder for those of you who are worshiping at home, we will be celebrating Holy Communion as part of our service, so please make sure you have your elements ready for that point in the service. Let us now offer up our confession and hear God's promise of forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil all that keeps us from loving God and loving each other. This is the struggle to which we were called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and in the name of Jesus Christ your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Set your hope 
and grace are mine, forgiven is my sin. Jesus, my only hope, the Savior of the world. Great is the Lord, we cry, God let your kingdom come. Your word has set me free. Thank you for saving me. <clears throat> Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. For we know your truth has set me free. You set your Let us pray. Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave us a new commandment, to love one another as he loves us. Write this commandment on our hearts and give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our scripture readings. First, a reading from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And now a reading from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of John. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set to you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. 
Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Then when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you know what I have done to you? Jesus asks his disciples on the night in which he was betrayed. What happened that night, what with the foot washing and all, had to have been profoundly upsetting to Jesus' disciples. Recall that for them, it had been a whirlwind of events the last couple of days. Lazarus had been raised from the dead not too long before all of this. Uh, Jesus had been anointed by Mary, in a manner of speaking, who was the sister of Lazarus. And Jesus had described what she did in pouring the oil over him as a preparation for his burial. He had predicted his death, and he also had noted his willingness to face said death. And now he was doing something that in most cases not even a servant was required to do. He was washing his disciples' feet. Peter's response, of course, is very typical of Peter. He's kind of a brash guy, but also not really that surprising given the circumstances. A teacher, a lord, stooping to do such a menial and subservient task was just unheard of. And so Peter was undoubtedly embarrassed for Jesus and embarrassed for himself. And I guess that even though the other disciples who had remained silent, they probably felt the same way. Do you know what I have done to you? Jesus asks his disciples. Now, for those of you who are familiar with the church year and with Holy Week in particular, you know that this is the story that is nearly always read on Maundy Thursday. It's got the new commandment. Maundy is mandatum commandment Thursday. And so this reminder that we as Jesus followers are not above even the lowest task, like washing feet, well, it feels like a reminder of something we already know, all right? The shock value of this story gets lost on us, and, and too often we think of the ways that we have served and we figure we're good, you know? We're not above jumping into usher or be a parking lot attendant when needed. And if the homeless shelter needs somebody to prepare a meal or needs hygiene supplies, we are there, man. We are feet washers extraordinaire. We got this, Jesus. We got it. Now, when I teach the, the Holy Communion classes for young people, I always include this story of Jesus' Last Supper, even though John, the Gospel writer John, does not even talk about the bread and the wine or the, the connection to Jesus' body and blood like Matthew, Mark, and Luke do. But we talk about this story because both the commandment to do this in remembrance of me and the commandment to love one another are very important to our, our identity as Christian people. The meal that we take strengthens us for the service that Jesus calls us to through the new commandment and through the example of the foot washing. Now in that class, we also talk about how even though we do repeat the eating and the drinking part in worship, we don't repeat regularly the foot washing part and why that is too. I mean, first, you know, feet, right? But also because Jesus didn't really mean we were only supposed to wash people's feet. I mean, it's not like we as Christians were supposed to run around with buckets and washcloths chasing people around the street or the grocery store or wherever, begging them to remove their shoes so we can fulfill our Christianly calling. And we as modern day followers, we seem to get that without a whole lot of explanation. And yet, can we truly and honestly answer yes to Jesus' question when he asks, do you know, do you know what I have done to you? We think we can, 
I mean, we think it is about just serving the last and the least, and it is, of course, it is, but that serving comes in even more mundane ways than most of us consider. Let me give you an example. An example of this comes from when I was in high school and I was working one of my first jobs. I, one of my first jobs was at McDonald's. Woohoo! Um, I won't go into detail because it's even less pleasant to think about than stinky feet, but let's just say that one night while I was working, it came to our manager's attention that one of the bathrooms um, had a little bit of a clogging problem and not the dancing type, okay? <laughs> and I will never forget what this manager did in that moment. She got the news, she heard the description of the problem, which again, I'm not gonna share, cause, and then she kinda hung her head, sighed, and said, I can't make one of you guys do this. All right, I'm going in. And she grabbed her mop, and she grabbed her bucket, and she took care of it. And she was the manager, right? She was the manager, she could have picked any one of us. She could have chosen the person with the least seniority. She could have picked the person she liked the least in that moment. She could have had us draw straws. It was McDonald's, there were plenty of straws. She could have, she had every right to do so, but she didn't. Like a good servant leader, Linda, my manager, I don't think I remember any other managers, but I remember her, she just did it herself. She may not have looked at it this way, and I assure you I didn't at the time either as a 16-year-old high school kid, but she washed our feet that night. She washed our feet that night. She set aside her authority, and she showed us what true leadership and true servanthood, what that really looks like. And that too, I believe, is what Jesus is getting at. We often want to think that we're fulfilling this love commandment and that we're washing each other's feet when we do the, the kind of nice kinds of serving. And let it be said, we most certainly are. I do not want to diminish any act of kindness that we undertake, whether we're real rebuilding decks on mission trips or, or helping our neighbor who's recovering from COVID to clean up their yard this year for spring cleanup. These are important things and they are so holy and they set such an exam excellent example to the world of what the love of Christ looks like. But what, what I want to lift up too is that it's also the less noticeable and the less important maybe even tasks that we do. Things that this past year have given us opportunities to undertake in spades. Things like seeing that the business or church or home that we're about to enter is asking us to wear a mask and just putting it on properly without snark, without complaint, and without expecting a cookie for it either. Things like giving up doing things the way we always have or the way we want to in hopes of keeping others safe. Things like considering the needs of the vulnerable and not just our own wants. And this is the kind of thing that you can't really post on Facebook, but they matter too. I mean, not making some poor beleaguered employee approach you to put on your mask, you're washing that employee's feet. And two, I could use this one, not glaring at people who aren't wearing masks in public spaces, because you know what, you don't know their story. That's washing their feet too. Beyond the pandemic, we have so many additional, quieter, simpler, yet no less sacrificial ways to wash feet taking a breath and, and offering a little kindness to that customer service rep who's on the other end of the phone line who wants your issue resolved as much as you do, that's washing that person's feet. Setting down your book or your phone or your knitting and, and snuggling with, with your kids or your pets or your spouse, that's washing their feet. Letting that, that worn out parent who's wrangling hangry kids in front of you in line at the grocery store, letting them to go ahead of you rather, even though you've only got 14 items and they've got this mounded cart, you're washing their feet. Bonus washes if you can actually get those hangry kids to smile during the process too. Do you know what I've done to you? Jesus asks. And we do, even as we don't. A lot like Peter and a lot like the other disciples that night. We know, we know that Jesus washes our feet, gives us, his, gives us life through his own saving death, gives us nourishment with his own body and blood. We know that we've been given a, a share with Jesus through our baptism and through the meal of Holy Communion. 
we know that we are so very, very loved and that loving one another is one of the best ways we show Jesus that we do understand what he's done. We don't always know why Jesus does all this on our behalf, but we definitely give thanks to God that he did. So do you know what I have done to you? Jesus asks. If so, show me, he says, and show the world by loving one another just as much as I have loved you. So we will try, dear Jesus. So we will try. Amen. Our Father call, love one another. In our cluttered hearts he calls, love one another. In our darkness love is light, in our wrongness love is right. In our weakness come unite, love one another. Christ in love accepted you, love one another. Others need his mercy to love one another. See the ones for whom he died, see his arms are opened wide. Move beyond your fear and pride, love one another. Live for more than just yourself, love one another. Give your days for someone else, love one another. Lift your eyes, the needs are real, live a love that they can feel. Only speak to help and heal, love one another. Time is short, the day is near, love one another. Keep your purpose strong and clear, love one another. We are one, we share his life, we are one, we lift the light. We are one in Jesus Christ, love one another. Our worship continues now with our offering and anthem. Again, thank you to all of you for your continued support of our mission and ministry. If you're here in the parking lot, you can turn your offering in as you leave today. You can also always give online by clicking on the donate button on our Christus website. And now uh, our anthem with Bruce. That should, that should be better. All right, let's try it again. Love. 
one another That's what Jesus said It's so very tempting to hate instead When there is an enemy that irks and annoys Just go to the opposite shell Joy Love, 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 love one another Jesus did command Don't rage against your neighbors Please understand When life sends its troubles And you want to be mad Just go share some happiness And be glad Love, 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 love one another Follow Jesus on the way Do it every single day Accept and then forgive, that's a better way to live. Be compassionate and true, if they find know where it's due. Let the thoughtful feelings seat, and then provide some hope and peace. Be strong, bitterness be healed, cheerful thoughts should be revealed. Don't let anger fill your heart, lend a hand and do your part. You will not be seen as weak, if you turn the other cheek. Let vengeance be your guide, let God's love be on your side. Love one another, Jesus sends the call to repent and tolerate to one and all. Bring kindness and graciousness to people you meet. You'll find it will bring the rewards so sweet. Love, love, love one another. Love one another just like Jesus did. The light of life keeps shining and death is hid. The message is very clear and should not be blurred. Just one love another, yeah. Continue now with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, for the church. Strengthen your people gathered around the globe on this holy day in homes, in churches, and outside under your sky. Bless all congregational ministries. Give us all a hunger for your word and a joy in receiving it. Feed us at all our tables with your blessing. Blessed are you, Lord, for this good earth. Cleanse and protect the water you have given for our drinking and our washing. Sustain crops and herds that provide our food. Teach us how to live so there is enough for all. Blessed are you, God, for our nation. Lead us out of ancient patterns of prejudice. Protect all people throughout the world who flee violence and oppression. Establish wise and just leadership in every place and peace where there is violence and war. Blessed are you, God, for caring for the needy. Feed the hungry. Give jobs to the unemployed. Embrace all who are isolated and lonely. Comfort those living with guilt and those who mourn. Blessed are you, God, for accompanying the sick. Bring an end to this pandemic and restore healthy and hearty connections between persons. Empower medical personnel. Receive our prayers for all we name here before you now. God, please hold them close to you. 
Blessed are you, God, for the generations of the faithful who have proclaimed our Lord's death and lived in service to others. Unite us with them in hope until we join with them at your everlasting banquet. Now hear these and all of our prayers, O God, in the name of the one who loves us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. Our worship continues with the celebration of Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This was just a cup filled with wine. This was just ordinary bread baked for guests. Until Jesus took them, took and drank from the cup, even though it was his cup of pain, filled with the agony of the world, took and broke the bread even though his body was too young to be broken. This and these would be ordinary lives unless the bread, unless the wine is poured into them and the mystery of grace takes place. Join this meal, not because you fully understand, but because you need to reach out and receive the life that is offered to you. Please share Holy Communion with one another in saying, this is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jesus name 
Our service concludes with the reading of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? Oh, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved, in you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me, they make mouths at me, they shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord, let him deliver, let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I'm poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. 
O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the home of the wild, horns of the wild oxen. You have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and shall turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down into the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This concludes our service. In the name of Christ, go in peace. Amen.